Hi, welcome. This is my name is Brad McCoy. Um, what I'm going to do here today is I am going to make a video for this little device right here. It's uh, an ESP13 wireless shield. And what we're going to do, and I have a temperature sensor attached to it. And what we're going to do is when I take the Arduino Uno board, we're going to put the two together, something like this. Okay, and now that they're sandwiched together, um, what we're going to do is we're going to end up putting this temperature sensor on the internet so anyone in the world can click a button and read the temperature off this sensor and that will be the goal of the project um, there are when I talk later on about these dip switches here's the two switches I'm talking about that both go up together and down together from an on and off state and we'll, we'll deal with that here in a little bit um, I'm going to switch to desktop view and we'll continue from there first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get this device on our network connected to our router and get it an IP address and get it set up so it's a server. Um, so what you got to first do is open up your wireless and you can do this with your laptop or your cell phone and mine seems to want to be, there it is, do it Wi-Fi config. I've already connected to it and I've already gone up here and typed in my IP address. This is all in the documentation that comes with the board. This is your secret IP address you type in and then you have your back end access to access the settings on the board. Um, I'm going to leave the top the same. Station is what I set it to. Um, I connected to my router which is the SSID is McCoy and typed in my password and then we're going to declare it a server and we're going to designate a port. A port is any number you want to make up. I chose 1969. Then when you click submit this thing is going to reset and it's going to connect to your router as if it was your computer powering up and then you what you do is you got to figure out what the IP address is that it connected as so you need to go to your what I did is I went to my router configuration screen and looked it up and then I wrote down the IP address for future reference so that's the first step get it set up on your network as a server Alrighty, I chose. Okay, now the next thing you're going to need is my sketch that I made. So I've put all my files out on GitHub.com. If you do a search and type in some of these things, I think you should eventually find my repository. And in there is ESP13 Web Server Sensor.ino. When you go ahead and click on it, bring it up, copy it, paste it over here to your Arduino IDE, and it's not very long, and you'll be able to upload it. <coughs> Excuse me. So the key here is is kind of understanding how this is how this is working. The Arduino Uno board communicates with the Wi-Fi board through the serial connection. Um, the problem is, is that the serial connection is the same thing that the IDE uses to upload to the Arduino board. So that's where the dip switches come in. You have to make sure when you do the upload that those two switches are turned to the off position or else the upload will just fail. Um, I've already uploaded so I'm going to skip that step but I'm going to put my switches in the off position 
to show you how we different things you could do for debugging because I'm sure you're going to want to add to this script, modify it and change it and you're going to want to go, go through this process. So open up your serial monitor and go ahead and type in anything you want. And the reason you can type in anything is, is, is if you read this through the sketch there's no processing of what you send to it is it just looks to see if you sent anything to it um, like it's borderline barbaric um, but there it is so its response is an HTML header HTTP header and then it also gives you the, the current temperature and humidity so that's you can use this tool here to debug your script and upload back and forth uh, to get things kind of how you want it and then when you're ready to go to the next step after this that's when you change your dip switches to the on position which is what I'm going to do right now when they're in the on position you will not be able to use this serial monitor anymore I can go ahead and type in there and it won't talk to me anymore so now you're at the point where um, you're going to want another tool. Now, this is where I got stuck on the original documentation. This tool, I tried to download it and I tried to run it, and it wouldn't work for me. So I made my own tool, and it's probably not as good, but it got me to where I wanted to go. And I, unfortunately, though, for the rest of the world, I did it in the only real compiler that I know very well, and that's VB6. Long pause so everyone can laugh. There you go. So um, the tool is, let's go back here to the main directory. I put it out here, and I actually put the code out here, too. I don't know... I'd imagine a lot of people are going to have problems running this EXE. Since I have VB6 installed, I can just run this EXE directly from my station. Uh, you may have to get on Google and figure out uh, what you need to download to upload to get it. I did also provide the project and the form and the code that I used to compile to make this EXE. So when you run it, and you download it and run it, I have it sitting right here. It's very simple says my IP address is this and I changed that to a 6 and the 6 is where the Arduino board server is at. You go ahead and type in your port number that you set up in your configuration screen and you click the connect button. And if this right side pops up that means that you did connect and here's where you can go ahead and type anything you want again. This is basically exactly like your serial window that we just looked at. Click send, see the lights blinking and it sends you the exact same thing it sent me before but the only difference is this time is it's across my network through my router to a different computer on my network so um, it's a bigger step forward you're not just going back and forth through the Arduino software you're actually going across your network so now you're closer to going across the internet alright the next thing you're going to need to do and you can use this tool for various reasons debugging your headers and everything else it was, it was very handy I don't think I could have gotten to the point I've got to without this tool um, so next step is you're going to want to have a way on the internet to get through your router to your Arduino board and that's called uh, I think it's called port forwarding and you got to get into your router configuration and you got to uh, set up that IP address to forward traffic through port 1969 or whatever port you type in from the internet 
Okay, so when you get that done, then you're ready for my HTML page that I put together here called homeautomation.html. <coughs> and you do have to have a web page. Uh, and inside here it uses Ajax and it's really basically simple it's only about that big it's just one button on the screen and when you put that on your website it's going you run it it's going to look like this it's going to be one button and when they click the button it says reading sensor see the lights blinking and it's now 73 degrees in here. I've had the pellet stove running for a lot longer and it's slowly getting warmer and warmer. So there we go. We got um, we got the sensor hooked up to the boards and it's on the internet and it works fairly good. I've got you uh, Arduino script that works, <laughs> needs a lot of work, doesn't even understand arguments. And what's also nice is there's a lot of extra pins on the board so that it can do a lot more than just a temperature sensor. And um, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And uh, good luck with everything.